What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, coach of your Montreal Milotic, bringing you another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle. Today, we're here for BBL week number, no, round number two, the semi-finals. And we are facing off against OG Albina, coach of the Miami Men's, in a rematch of last season's finals. Now, before I move forward, I do want to say congrats to Owen on hitting 1,000 subscribers. A really big deal. Congratulations, buddy. Uh, definitely deserve it. All the hard work you're putting in is definitely paying off, so good for you. And if you have not checked them out, make sure to go and give them a, another sub. Now, this matchup, super interesting. His team, very scary. Uh, we played it once before, and he actually froze us twice with his Lunala, with his Ice Beaming Lunala. But hopefully that can not happen this time around. I will say, I, unfortunately, have played this game already. Okay, I played this game already, but my, for some reason, my audio did not capture for my team builder or for the game itself. I don't know why. But we're going to have things that are done to make it entertaining for you guys and keep the mystery alive. So I'm just going to go over the team and explain why we brought what we brought. So looking at the matchup, Lunala is a very scary Pokemon. Uh, weakness policy or power her meter beam with agility. Both are very scary. A boot set makes a lot of sense. Uh, Roost like he brought last time is definitely a possibility. I do expect like Moon Guys Beam plus Moon Blast as being the coverage. Garchomp is very problematic. It outspeeds a lot of my team. Earthquake stabs a really good poison jab for the Bulu. And then Outrage or Dragon or whatever is terrifying. Uh, Buzzle offensively is good as either a Choice Scarf Pokemon, but it can also be a really good check to something like my Zekrom. Then there is the Raikou, which Subtoxic, I imagine, would be the set he would bring. There is the Suicune, which uh, last time he brought like an Assault Vest Suicune, which was there to handle the, 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 the Landorus. I don't know if that comes again this time. I do find that Suicune this week kind of lets in Zekrom freely and lets it set up, which is not a good thing. Togekiss, kind of the same deal, lets in Zekrom. Zekrom can then sweep, which is really important. Metagross, I, I don't see a world where it comes. It just lets in Landorus for free. Drapion, it also lets in Landorus for free, and it kind of pressures a lot, and Landorus is already really good against the roster. Uh, but it, I guess if he wants it there for T-Spikes, he would bring it there for that. Metagross, I guess, for rocks, because he does have two rockers, one of them being Garchomp, the other being the Metagross. Rivambi, I definitely can see coming. Whether it's for webs or for Quiver Dance, it is very scary as a fairy type and very scary as a web setter. Both are terrifying prospects for my team to deal with, and we're running literally Defog Lando just for webs. It's, it's literally that bad. And Roselia, I don't expect it to come. He brought it last time. I think that was for a meme, not for the actual seriousness of the battle. But let's go ahead and jump into what we are bringing and why. Starting with our very first mod, it is clearly and obviously going to be our Zekrom. Zekrom is insane in this match, a very strong Pokemon here with the Bolt Strike and the Scale Shot. It is the same moveset we had last time. The only difference on this is we have a slightly, a little bit less speed and a different item. So instead of being the Lumberry like we were last time, we are Boots in case of potential Rocks, Toxic Spikes, or even the Webs from the Ribombi. Uh, and then if I get a Dragon Dance up plus a Scale Shot, I should be in a really, really good position against a lot of this team. The attack investment we have allows us to always get the KO on Garchomp. Assuming it is a Bonberry, if we are at plus one and we get three hits with Scale Shot, that will always get the KO, which is really, really good. We are able to take a two attacks, two uh, Earthquakes from Drapion from full, which is amazing. And we have enough investment to two a KO max HP, max defense Buzzwell at plus one. Very good Pokemon here. Our next mod is going to be the only new member of the team. That's going to be Juvia, our Slowbro. Ice Beam, Scald, Thunder Wave, and Teleport. Really solid moveset here. T-Wave is there for the chance that he tries to set up on me with the Lunala, and that's why I have the Kassiberry. It's also decently good against something like the uh, the Ribombi that's going to try and set up a Quiver Dance against me. A Togekiss, potentially it might be Scarf. Who knows? Scald, very good for burns. Ice Beam, fantastic against the Garchomp specifically, and the Teleport for Momentum is really the most important thing here. The investment that we have on this Pokemon allows us to take a modest plus one Lunala's Moon Guys Beam after Rocks because of the Kassiberry, and the rest was put into our defense to take hits from Buzzwolf, to take hits from... Uh, I guess in this case, Metagross and Drapion and Garchomp. That's really it. Really solid Pokemon overall. Regen is so nice. It was fantastic in our mocks. Our next one is going to be Hashirama, our Tapu Bulu, which was the MVP to the uh, to the last battle we had. Nature's Madness, Leaf Seed, Protect, and Horn is the same moveset as before with leftovers. Again, all the same. The only difference with this set is instead of being speed for uh, a Buzzle that was kind of fast with like a few EVs, now we have Buzzle, a speed for Buzzle with no EVs. That's really the only difference. Still, Leaf Seed and Protect with Horn Leaf is very strong. The Nature's Madness to wear down Pokemon like Lunala makes sure so they can never have a Shadow Shield up, wearing down the Buzzwool, wearing down the Togekiss. Uh, and just all these Pokemon is really important for the win condition of my Zekrom. Very strong Pokemon overall. What does it do in terms of the investment? Well, it allows us to take a non-boosted Garchomp's Poison Jab from full, and we have the rest in our special defense. So we can be a good, solid, generic Fairy check against a lot of this team because he does have two really good Fairy type Pokemon. Our next one is going to be our Terrakion here with the Hearthstone. We're running Rock Blast, Close Combat, Air Slash, and Substitute. The speed there is for the Garchomp. 
the sub is there because we're gonna be forcing a lot of switches with this pokemon i do feel that way uh, and if i can get a sub and he goes into a buzz wall and i can go for air slash i'm in a really good position because i can get two air slashes off against it the first one won't ko because we're not that specially offensive uh but he can also be very bulky and then the second one will get the job done it also helps us out because if I have a sub up against Lunala, Lunala might be coming in trying to catch a close combat. It's immune to it. It might try and do that. If I have a sub up, then I can go for Rock Blast. The first hit will break the sub up. Then I'll get really big damage on it after, after that. I go for a second one as he finally is able to do damage to me. But if he tries to set up a agility or a, a weakness policy, or not weakness policy, but a, a Meteor Beam, then he really can't do the setting up and attacking of me at the same time. And that's going to be leading to my advantage because if he tries to get the boosting move off, then that's one thing. It's not going to kill me. Meteor Beam won't kill me. Agility won't break my sub. So I'm in a good position to be able to then win with something or at least stop it from sweeping me with my next mon, which is going to be my Frostlass. Frostlass is a very good Pokemon here. We're running a mixed Frostlass this week. The Sibberry is really important. Again, it is there. The same reason we have it on the Slowbro. Be able to take a hit from the Lunala. Essentially, the speed on this is for the Garchomp. The spikes are amazing in this matchup, especially because it lets me know what kind of set the Lunala is. Uh, the bulk that we have for this Pokemon with the Cassivary allows me to find or allows me to take a modest Lunala's Moongeist Beam from full. And we also take a Jolly Garchomp's non-boosted Earthquake from full. Shadow Ball, not Shadow Ball, Poltergeist into the Sucker Punch. Yes, Sucker Punch will always KO most non-super bulky Lunalas, which is really important here. Uh, it also lets me know what kind of item it is right away. Is it going to be Boots? Is it going to be something like Power Herb? How do I play around it? And that is important, I find, in this matchup here, which is, again, really important. So again, Poltergeist into Shouse, into Sucker Punch rather, insanely good in this situation here. Uh, and I, I just love that we have a situation we can use all six of our, well, stats in our EV distribution. I find it super, super cool. Our next and final Mon is going to be Armstrong, our Landorus. This Pokemon is super good in this matchup. It is honestly one of the best Pokemon in the matchup because what is his switch in? There's nothing, but it is also playing a very big, big role as a support Pokemon with Defog. It is the only Pokemon we did not change at all. We made very minor changes on a lot of different things, but we did not change this Pokemon at all. Earth Power is going to be amazing against something like the Raikou, the Drapion, the Metagross. It hits the Garchomp for really good damage. Uh, it hits the Suicune for the best damage I possibly can. Sludge Wave hits his only resists or immunities. His resist to ground is going to be the Rebombi, and immunity is going to be the Tokus, both of which just die to poison coverage. Yeah, and we're faster than Needle Kings. Needle Kings have poison and ground coverage. This is faster than that, which is really important. Very strong Pokemon in this situation. Knockoff is there in case he runs a Metagross that is going to be Air Balloon. So we can hit that for super effective damage, but it also hits the Lunala for four times effective damage. And if the Shadow Shield is broken, we just should Oko it outright, which is amazing. And Defog is there for webs, maybe for Toxic Spikes and Rocks, but mostly it's there for the webs. Very important Pokemon here. In my mocks, I did lead with this Pokemon. It was doing well. In my previous game, I led with Terrakion, but I think now that I'm running Substitute, I do want to go with the Landorus here as my lead. But guys, that's going to be the team for this battle, the semifinal battle of the BBL. Can we avenge our last season's finals loss against Owen and move on to the finals for the second straight season? One of Owen or I will do it. Who's it going to be? You'll have to watch to find out. The secret word of today's video is going to be tomato sauce. Make sure to comment that down below if you made it this far. Thanks for watching the team other guys. Let's do it. It's time to battle. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Mad O'Shea channel. I am your coach and high performer on any league that you can think of, Incog M. And yes, that's right. It's time for another time where two people decide, you know what? Let's talk about a battle happening right in our face. Let's 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 get some co-commentary on this bitch. Today, however, I have another uh person of the white variety that isn't Matt joining me. It's Razor! Hello, fuck Earthly Lil. Let's get it. <laughs> so, Matt unfortunately messed up his settings on his audio, so he wasn't recording himself uh, speaking or his match audio. Now you have to deal with us two talking. We tanked it. For the next 15 or so minutes between pauses and such. So, with that being said, hope you guys watch this and love it. <clears throat> nah, bro, let's get into it. All right, so me and Razor watch this live. And it was yeah, the we weirdest did. thing in the world to see Matt just <laughs> not talking, not saying anything. It was like, we we're sitting there like, are we deaf? Did we do something wrong? No, we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, so for no, complete and total context, Matt O'Shea Woo! and Owen are playing in BBL semifinals. To see who's going to finals. If you don't know, they played in BBL finals last season where Owen did take the crown. Now this season, Owen and Matt both had different teams, different mon mons, different situations. 
Fraser, tell them about Matt's team since we were there for at least building wise. All right. Um, so with Matt's team, we have Zekrom. I'm pretty sure it's got quite a bit of bulk. It's got like 188 HP and like enough speed to outpace whatever Owen's fastest mon was uh, with one Dragon Nets. Terrakion's a Hardstone, uh, holding the Hardstone with close combat, Rock Blast, Sub, and some Air Slash for the Buzzball to just do a fucking bunch of damage joint. Lando just fucks everything as it always does with its Life Orb, Sheer Force, Earth Powers, Knock Off, Defog, and I think Sludge Wave. Uh, Slowbro is Cassid Berry with the Skull, Teleport, Thunder Wave, Slack Off, I think, or no, Ice Beam. Um, uh, Frostlass is also Cassid Berry with the uh, Ice Beam, Poltergeist, Sucker Punch, and Spikes. And Tabu Bulu is a really especially defensive Tabu Bulu with Horn Leech, Leech Seed, Nature's Madness, and uh, Protect, I think it was. And let me tell you, that Bulu in Mox absolutely fucking crushed my dreams. It was a, it was a nightmare to deal yeah, with. Yeah, and most so certainly, Owen brought a similar-ish team to what he brought last time, but to go over it, I'm pretty sure this is the same Assault Vest, Suicune, Habanberry, Garchomp, um, I believe, I forget what the Draypan's item, might have been Black Sludge, um, Boots yeah. on the Lunala, I think it was Helmet or Leftovers on the Buzzwold, and the Robombi might have been Boots as well. And yep. essentially this game, which you'll see, kinda end it kinda ends within the first few turns, but you'll understand when we <laughs> get there, okay? Cause let me tell you, if there's two people that have hacks against each other more, I couldn't name them. Cause it's really Matt and Owen if we think about it. So with that being said, Real. Matt's going to go ahead and just do his little hand gestures about talking about his team while we sit here and watch yep. him awkwardly talk for a few <laughs> minutes here. Now, listen, Matt's thinking about his lead and in Mox, Matt kind of he, he knew what he wanted to lead, but Matt does this thing where he's like, OK, I know I'm going to lead this. And then he leads with something else. Of course, it's a common thing draft players do sometimes. However, uh, Matt yeah, likes to discuss out loud what is his best option. And of course, as you can see, it's going to get very awkward yeah. very quickly. Yeah. So I also like to point out that uh, Matt did not bring a, either of his dark types against the Lunala, so he could be cracked for that. But he does have the Cassid Berries to at least fall back on. And also, he didn't bring either of his normals, which was choice. definitely an interesting option, too. Oh, true. I mean, one of them's a fucking Porygon. Listen, don't doubt Porygon. What was the other one? A uh, knock towel. Okay. No oh, okay. And we're off to the races in this match. And you can see Matt's green screen there slightly as you know green screens are not perfect. Matt has shield, yep. Owen has sword. Let's get right into the violence. Woo! So Matt does a little transition fuck? because he did not know whether or not his audio was working. Yeah, I knew this oh, was coming. <laughs> so here's <laughs> the thing though. Because Matt didn't know, he could easily ask him like, yo, give me a few minutes to go ahead and get myself situated. But now we're here. So that's pretty fine. So uh Matt is As you can see. fighting a goddamn Drapion first. Now, Matt's trying to figure out if this is Scarf or if it's going to be doing any other bullshit, but let's continue on slightly and we'll pause it a bit. As you can see, this is a terrific lead on Matt's part, uh, leading off with the Lando against the Drapion. Even if it's Sugar Bay Drapion, Drapion can't do anything to one-shot Lando. Not even an Adamant Ice Fang could do it um, without the Life or Boost or anything like that. So even Scarf won't, uh, won't kill it. So Owen's forced out. Uh, that kind of reveals that it's probably not Sugar or Scarf, but perhaps he doesn't want to stay in. So he goes into the Suicune, which, um, yeah, exerting pressure like it does. Earth Power goes off. Um, we see it do about 30%. So that's quite a specially defensive bulky Suicune. Yeah. And this thing was... It, we learned recently, well, we learned from last battle that it was Assault Vest and it's Assault Vest again. And yes. let me tell you something. <laughs> That's a crazy, crazy set to be running on a Suicune that would prefer to have lefties or something else maybe in this match. But maybe I'm crazy because Owen's better than me. Personally, I think, though, maybe Assault Vest wasn't the play. Well, for sure, there is a Bulu that um, can heal it with Grassy Train. But the thing about Suicune in this matchup is it kind of just lets Zekrom set up. So it, it just wants to stay around in the, like, in the start game, but not, but like fucking die mm -hmm. into the mid game to end game. Doesn't really want to stay around and wants to just try to tank Lando's hits and go from there. Exactly. But also, fucking Owen has a horrible team against uh, Lando. So yep. and as we maybe see, maybe he wants to keep it around. Matt switches so, yeah, out. He, yep, he's pivoting into the slow bro. There's nothing really the sweeping could do. Probably the worst is Toxic. 
but starts calm minding. He can always teleport into that Zerko and just fucking blow that bitch back. But he now does. it's just a Skull into a burn. Yep, which is better for Matt because getting toxic would be a hell of a lot worse on his Pokemon. Now he's going to go for the teleport, yeah, obviously, sure. because this is a great prediction turn, knowing that Owen's likely not going to stay in as we see yeah, Owen does. switch out back into the Drapion. Which is fucking terrific for Matt. That means another Earth Power is, is just fucking messing something up right now. And this weekend, because, you know, it's not recovery based or anything, it's really it's ta it's really taking a, a massive amount of chip from the fucking Earth Powers. And it won't be able to keep doing this song and dance for very long. So oh, back oh, into no. the Lando he goes. Uh, Lando is still at full HP, so once again, Drapion cannot kill it. Lando is faster than Drapion. Um, so, like, nothing Drapion can do can kill it. So, Owen's in a predicament once again. He ends up swapping out, and he goes into the fucking sweet good. Once now, again. here's where things go from, hey, this is good, to damn, this is worse. Well, I mean, all I'm yeah. saying is right. Woo! There's a crit that on the field. That is a crit. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a crit. And now that sweet cone is fucking useless. And let so me there tell goes you, like man. Owen's only defensive check to this Landorus, so that's uh that's not very how you do. Yep, and not let me tell him. you, What's he's gonna lose his Pokemon here, as far as I understand, because he can't use it anymore as his kind of cushion against this Landorus. So he loses the no, Sweet Coon, obviously. And now we're in a predicament where so Owen's getting crit, shit, obviously man. not the greatest thing, but Matt needs to take advantage of this as much yeah. as he can and make sure he plays on his P's and Q's. Now, what Owen does next is i mean i mean i think we all kind of didn't know what he wanted to do next but he does switch into the buzzwold but here's the thing he switches Let's into this right and apparently i got the thing wrong it's not helmet it's scarf this time but yeah scarf oh it is just on a different level and just decides you know what i'm gonna go ahead and get the fuck out of here myself too because he knows matt's gonna switch out and now yeah. this tells He's him that that's scarf because obviously he switched out first no doubt, no doubt. Drapion does come back in, but I believe um, it's not a bad play into like Matt's got some Matt's got some options. You can either go tra uh, Trachion, Dra uh, Trachion, Landorus, or just teleport and stay in and teleport, take the knockoff. But I mean, an Aqua Tail could definitely be scary, no doubt. Um, but Trachion is faster uh, than Drapion. And also, if this is more of a defensive Drapion, it could just be going to try to get up a T-Spike or something. That's pretty good against Matt. So, Matt's going to predict, uh, yeah, the T-Spike, or just think it's a safe play, perhaps trying to get justified on the knockoff, but I don't think Owen would ever go for that. But yeah, T-Spike comes off, so uh, Matt's looking pretty damn good here. Nothing can one-shot the Drapion once again, and this Drapion is kind of scared out, uh, potentially. He Owen, does have like Yeah, Owen decides to switch out of course and he goes into yeah. his buzzword. And we all kinda knew this was gonna happen because unless you shuck a berry, which he revealed he definitely wasn't if he wasn't gonna take a Landorus hit once. We kinda yeah. figure out, okay, well, what's the situation? How's this gonna go? Well, let's show you. Anyway. This sub is fucking massive. This sub was a brilliant turn because it is indeed choice scarf. And now that it's behind a sub, it it, it has to break the sub like the Tracheon uh cannot be killed in one hit because of the sub. So he can go for the close combat into the scarf, break the sub and just fucking kill it right back with the air slash, which is exactly what happened. So there goes Buzzwell. Choice scarf Buzzwell out of the way, like turn fucking seven. Terrific play by Matt. Absolutely incredible. Oh, we were debating on sub and or su sub or sword stance. And honestly, I was like, Man, Razor cut out there, but I definitely think we were debating Taunt and Swords Dance because wow, they would have been better. But the thing about it is, is that while it would have been better, we're very glad we went with uh, Sub here. Here's the problem. This turn, now I'm gonna pause it here, is very, very, very pivotal to the rest of the game. So right here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and everyone out there in between, this turn right here is very crucial to the rest of the game. Now Razor, wouldn't you say that this was an interesting turn to see live? Oh, it was fucking... It was something, let me tell you, it was something. Exactly, I agree. It was so, a complete mind fuck. 
as y'all see here, we're going to go ahead and just let you guys watch it out. So Matt basically is like, OK, I will die here because that's what I'm just going to do, honestly, because first he's like, I should switch. And then he's like, you know what? I think I'm fine losing my Terrakion here. So yeah. Matt's kind of like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go for the Matt O'Shea effect rock blast. And Owen <laughs> apparently miss did his EV spreads for Mr. Bombi, which caused him to actually speed tie, I believe, a Terrakion, and he dies because of it, because he loses the speed tie. If Owen was just faster, he would have killed him, and then we wouldn't be in the situation, of course. But credit to Matt for just staying in and rock blasting, because he could have easily switched out and taken more damage on something else. And as we see, the Garchomp comes in, and you know, at 6 3, still anything can happen, because Garchomp can definitely um, reverse a game. Yeah. No doubt. I mean, you know, it was 6-4, he didn't need tracking on anymore, so he was just sacking it off, but no, the Rubombi is fucking slower by accident, and that is, that is just, yeah, really bad time for Owen. So now close combat damage goes onto the Garchomp, does a fuck ton. Put that rough skin into the stomping tantrum, so that's a dead Terrakion, but Matt has so much momentum in this game. Um, he can easily go into Frostlass or the Landorus here. So with that being said, he's kind of just like, you know what? I'm probably going to be fine regardless. And before anyone says, why did Owen run Stomping Tantrum? Grassy Terrain, you guys already know this, man. So yeah, Matt's kind of just like, you know what? I'm going to just do what I do best and just hit what's in front of me. But Matt, you know, he likes to think through everything. And that sometimes doesn't work out in his favor, but it works out here because at least it gets him thinking of the end game that he wants to potentially get to. Because he has a lot of great options here to go into. And obviously 30 seconds are left as Matt is still thinking about, hmm, what's my secret word of the day today, as you might understand. And <laughs> I personally thought he would go Slowbro because Slowbro looked a lot better, at least to me, because, you know, defensively it's great. And he does go into it. But people were like, we were saying in calls, sort of kind of like Frostlass could come in, Orlando, depending on what he wants to do. Does go into slow yeah. though. Can't be toxic spiked, obviously, because he's already burned, which is once again an advantage. But yeah, very nice. Moving on but from I mean, here, uh, though, what happens? Because <laughs> this I, is an interesting one, Razor, you know? <laughs> honestly, I can't even remember. I just feel like Frostlass was an easy play, right? There was a there's a Garchomp, there's a Lunala, and there's a Drapion. Mm -hmm. So, like, Ice Beam's quite. Uh, easy if they go into Lunala then you just poltergeist and kill it. Yep. But yeah, okay, that's right. He gets up his fucking late game rocks, baby. The yep. the, the latest of fucking late game rocks. That's so into nice. the scold, which does not kill because Garchomp is bulky, but he's he, a fucking bitch and he gets the hacks, nice burn. Hey, Very man. nice. But honestly, he didn't really want that because he wanted to teleport out the next time. Well, because this lets him win all, but at least he know, has the cast of so much to Matt's team if he got it set up correctly. But oh, definitely. But uh, Matt played well against it, had the cast of berries in the back, you know. No worries there, of course. Of course. So Matt's sitting here, like, hmm, hmm, hmm. I need to thunder wave this and make sure I don't miss as it goes for its moon guys B more than likely, or if it decides to set up on him, because Matt really doesn't yeah. want this to get out of control. Obviously, because at this point in the For game, sure. while Lunala is not like the it's a crazy Pokemon at the end of the game here, of course, but oh, uh, no doubt. obviously it's not like it could just end up sweeping him, sweeping him, but it can definitely do more damage that will allow Drapion to free up the rest of his team. Unfortunately, though, we do see the Thunderwave pop off and now Owen has to deal with Let's that. Connect the fucking it's, just, it's so much like I don't blame anyone for anything that happens because the game we play the game to win. But just damn, that was that, that is just like insult to injury at that point, I guess. But Matt had to make sure that things had to go his way. And obviously he's gonna lose his Slowbro here because Slowbro is still not outpacing Lunala even if it's paralyzed. And Owen yeah. doesn't inevitably break through. And I think if Owen wanted to still outspeed the rest of the team, his team, he had to be like agility, and I think he had to agility three times, because I don't think he outspeeds Lando when he's paralyzed at plus four. Nope, not right. at all. So, yeah, all the frost dies. With that being said, so, like this is looking like it now. The game comes down, and obviously, Matt is going to win here. But just to discuss how it really happens, you know, Matt goes into his Landorus, and we see the little Nile Alpha, and we're like, damn, look at that man. Oh, nah. So he is just gonna go for his attack, look of course. 
<laughs> Look at that man. He is just going to go for an attack here, which I believe is just going to be his knockoff to make sure he scouts for any items or anything potentially that could be uh, hiding with that Lunala, of course, because Matt wants to make sure he doesn't lose anything, you know, any bullshit. And of course, he isn't going to get the kill here with Landorus. It's more so just for the knockoff, and he doesn't want to risk anything else. I mean, going into Lando here is a little bit scary if that Drapion had anything, like, in the back. But Drapion also hits, like, a wet noodle, so I probably never got past the Zekrom. Unless yep. it, like, fucking froze it with Ice Fang if I had it. Yeah, that'd be the craziest thing in the world. As you see, Owen does take down Landorus, but the game's basically over at this point after knocking off the boots, lowering its health. Yep. And now Zekrom can come in and just clean up the game. Of course, you know, he still has to hit all of his moves. Let's let's not act like we're idiots here. He has to hit his bolt strikes because fun fact of the afternoon, I personally didn't really know that bolt strike could genuinely miss until recently. So that's interesting. Yeah. No, I didn't. Wow. I never really gave it much attention. I just thought it was like, oh, you know, why would you run bolt strike if it's going to miss when you could just run fusion bolt? And I saw the damage difference and I was like, damn, you know what? I get it now. And then I was like, yeah, wow, that missing chance is still really like an exceptional reason to maybe not run it, Pretty but if you're running home claws though, hey, you get it. And I'm sure home Matt ran it one time. Zekrom. Hey man, I'm just nah, saying. I don't think he ran home claws once. Damn. Well, he needs to. Yeah. But with the end of the game coming down, let's go ahead and get wrapped up here. Razor, how would you say that Matt really played this game? I think he played excellently despite the hacks that may have occurred. Yeah, I think he played great. Um, like, like I said, that Suicune was not tanking that Landorus very long. All, like, all the crit basically did, uh, because it wasn't rest Suicune, was just ensure that Matt didn't have to teleport, like, play that teleport game one more time. It just it just uh, made the game a bit quicker. That Rebombe, uh, like, speed tie was really fucking unfortunate, but I do think Matt still had a lot, like, a lot more of the cards to win compared to Owen in that endgame. I think he was a lot more stacked in his favor. Of just course. because of the amount of mons he had and um i think he just not sure like i don't think owen could have won that um even even at the rebombi thing but i mean there was a chance but i think it was heavily in matt's favor matt but, yeah, having that's that gonna be... great advantage was definitely better for him imo but uh for sure that's gonna be it from us me razor tori and my rabbits and even the ghost in the back of your corner don't look now Here's the thing, went great, Matt's in the finals. I'm not gonna, I guess I could spoil Woo! it here, right? But go watch the other videos of the BBL uh, semifinalists to find out who's on the other side of the bracket that Matt will be facing next week in BBL finals. Personally, I think Matt might take this home this season, but who knows? His opponent could be Emil, it could Let's be Kurt, who knows? But with that being said, guys, thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you for being here on the Metal Shade channel. And make sure you check me and Razor out in the description down below as well. Believe me, we make pretty, I like to think, good content. Maybe subpar sometimes, but I think it's pretty good at the times. You know what I'm saying? Um, for sure. But from me and Razor and from Matt, we do say goodbye. Peace out.